Should you be punished for not helping someone in need? Your judgment to not help someone who might need medical attention, should that lead you to legal punishment? The duty to rescue or the Good Samaritan law has been a hot debate for years. Today's case dives into an unusual behavior of a man and his coworker. Or are they more than just coworkers? What happened between the four hours of Miss Yoon's life is a mystery, but the ultimate question is, should you be criminalized for not helping someone who needed medical rescue? Or was there more to Miss Yoon's death, someone else causing her negligence? This is a very interesting topic because actually in most countries around the world, you might have the moral duty to try and rescue someone or call someone for help if you do see someone that is in need of rescue, such as a medical attention, life and death. But just because you don't, you can't actually be criminally penalized. But in some countries, you can be. Apparently in Germany, France, Swiss, Netherlands, so I guess in a lot of European countries, it states that if you fail to provide help to someone who is in need of rescue, such as calling for help 911, I guess in extreme cases, you can get punishment. Some countries jail time and fine. And I'm thinking that this is more like in extreme cases. But this has been very controversial because in the past, many times, when you had the good heart, such as you wanted to help someone who might have passed out, who might have had a medical emergency, and let's say you accidentally lift their head or you accidentally touch them in a way where you shouldn't have, that could have also caused them to pass away. You can be actually charged by the family or be sued for wrongful death. And now, while you were just trying to help, the burden is on you. So there are a lot of times where people don't want to get involved. Or in other cases, let's say you're on the subway. This has happened in real life many times. And you saw someone getting abused, uh, be hit. Morally, it might be nice for you to intervene and help. But you being a bystander, by doing nothing, should you be really criminally penalized by the law, such as going to jail or, or be fined a couple hundred, couple thousand dollars just because you didn't do anything? thing for a stranger because everybody does have a different way of handling certain extreme situations. I mean, there were many times when I was a bystander, especially if you're in the city or it's busy. If you do see something, a lot of the times you just walk by. You think someone else will help. There was a recent case in America that did cause an outrage. There was a lady who needed medical emergencies. She was 60 years old. She went to the hospital. I believe she did not have insurance and they did check on her and they claimed that they didn't find anything wrong with her. Although she felt sick, she couldn't breathe, she says. And again, because she didn't have insurance or way to pay, they did release her and they did call the cops because she was not leaving. And who knows if they really did not find anything in the basic checkups and cleared her. Maybe she stayed a little longer. They could have found something or maybe they were negligent and they actually did not check up on her thoroughly. And because they knew that she wasn't gonna have any source to pay the hospitals, they just released her. Now the officers that got there ended up arresting this lady that was bounded to a wheelchair because they also thought that she was just kind of making a scene. They didn't believe that she couldn't breathe. So they arrested her, put them in like the back of their truck, a police truck. They came back a couple minutes or a couple hours later and they found her deceased. Now, I believe they were trying to have the officers that was involved charged with murder, basically saying that because of the negligence, it led to her death and that this was morally absolutely wrong. Lady, Miss Lisa, she was confirmed to have had a stroke, which was the cause of death, meaning that the actual officers, they did not touch her or like hit her that led to her death. So it was a natural cause. But again, this was very controversial because they literally did not listen to her. They literally left someone that was in need of help. They arrested her and treated her so poorly and she was found deceased in their car, in their vehicle. Technically, this did fall into that Good Samaritan law and the moral issues of helping someone that's in need. Should you be criminalized for something like this, again, is a hot topic. So today's case also involves a similar story in South Korea. This case has blown up and has millions of views. And I thought this would be an interesting story to share with you guys because it's still a mystery of what happened to Miss Yoon. Everyone's gonna have different opinions, so let's just respect each other. But a lot of you guys did comment that you 
you want to see outfits of the day like I used to do, I used to kind of showcase what I'm wearing for the video, but some people didn't like that because it was true crime and mystery videos. You guys know I'm really into fashion. I upload whatever I'm wearing on my Instagram. And I did attend New York Fashion Week a couple of days ago, and this is an outfit that I was wearing from there. One August night of 2019, husband Mr. Kim tried to reach his wife Sa Chong Yoon, or Miss Yoon. She was 44 years old. She wasn't picking up her phone. It was kind of getting late at night. She's also a mother. You know, in Asian countries, especially Korea, it's like if you're a mother, you should be coming home by like 8 p.m., getting dinner for your family. And apparently, Kim got so worried that day, he called her 31 times, including her children as well. They were teenagers and were trying to reach her all night. In the morning of August 17th, Mr. Kim would get a call from the hospital and he was alerted that his wife came into the ER that morning but came in passed away. There's a voice recording and you can hear in his voice he is so shocked that one day you wake up and your wife is no longer here. <laughs> Now, according to the records, it shows that she was found in the backseat of her own car at 6.40 a.m. She was brought into the ER actually by her male coworker. The first thing was that the nurses did find it odd that she actually had no undergarments on. She had her jeans and her black shirt on, but they did notice that she had no bra on and no undergarments. And it was later when police actually said that they found her undergarments inside of a plastic bag inside of her own purse which is really odd. In the autopsy, no drugs were found in her system. There were a few bruises in her body, but no external damage was found that led to her death. Actually, the cause of death was cerebral hemorrhage, something that happened inside of her own body, meaning they found it most likely that this was an internal damage, usually due to high blood pressure. So interesting, there was no external force, meaning she didn't hit her head somewhere or somebody else hit her. Miss Yoon's husband, Kim, him. Now he claims that she did not have any health issues. She was healthy. She was a healthy 44 year old. She was not getting any treatments or medications for high blood pressure. And if anything happened, they didn't know about it. Especially having a cerebral hemorrhage at 44 years old for someone that's healthy. It's really unlikely, but I guess, you know, it does happen. So the person, of course, in question was Miss Yoon's co worker, the last person to see Miss Yoon alive. And his name was Mr. Joe. Joe has been her co-worker at the same company for about 10 years. I believe he was in his late 40s or early 50s. And in the beginning, he first claimed that he called Miss Yoon at 6.15 a.m. in the morning and she didn't pick up. And when he went to go and try to find her, he randomly found her car at the parking lot of their own office building. He looked through the windows and he saw her passed out, so he called for help. Of course, come to find out after doing some more digging, Joe was the last person to see Miss Yoon alive, and they were together about 11 hours since she has passed. The true story was that the night before, Miss Yoon and Joe decided to have dinner together, and apparently they were drinking a little bit, and he claimed at first that there was some more work stuff to talk about, and also because they were near Joe's apartment, Yoon wanted to use the bathroom. The elevator camera showed that around 10 p.m. she's seen in the elevator going up to his apartment. The next thing that the camera catches, and this is the CCTV footage that people are baffled about, is around 2 a.m. where Joe is seen dragging Miss Yoon, where it seems like she doesn't have any consciousness. She's barefoot. And he's like doing this little hug motion, trying to keep her head up. And at one point, he couldn't even hold her weight. So he even falls on top of her. Then he is seen driving Miss Yoon's car and parking it around the parking lot's entrance door and tries to put her in the back of the seat. Then he is seen putting her halfway into the car and goes to the driver's seat and drives a little bit, like trying to position the car so he can try to put her inside of the car. Or nobody actually really knows why he was doing this or what his plans were. Later, we'll come to find out that he actually did not even put Miss Yoon into the actual 
passenger back seat. He actually put her into the footrest area of the passenger seat. So the area where there's like the footrest and then like a bump, very, very, very uncomfortable and an odd place to put someone there. But of course, later we'll find out that there might be a reason why he wanted to do this. Maybe he wanted to conceal a body or so that nobody looked into the windows to see somebody inside of the car. And then he drives the car to the parking lot of their office. And that's where he claims that he found her in the beginning of the investigation. Police, the family could not understand after watching these CCTV footages, what was going inside Joe's head? And why was Miss Yoon found unconscious at her coworker's apartment? Nothing really made sense. And this is where Joe's story enters. And his side of the story is the only version we have because Miss Yoon is no longer here. Now, Joe claims till this day throughout the whole court case that he himself and Miss Yoon were just friends. Again, he claimed that they had dinner, that they were talking, they had more work stuff to talk about. And again, later with a bathroom story, she wanted to use bathroom at 10 p.m. at night. Now he claims that he was supposed to go to another town to Seoul because that's where I believe his wife was living. And I guess because of work, he was going back and forth from his own wife's place to his apartment where his work was. So he needed to go back home, pack up and then leave again. That's why he went back to his apartment after dinner with Yoon. Joe claims that innocently, she just went up to use the bathroom them right away and she wasn't coming out after a couple minutes it turned to about an hour and he went to go and check up on her now he claims that he opened his bathroom door about an inch and asked her are you okay and he said that he saw miss yoon vomiting everywhere she was on the toilet she did say yes i'm okay but because she and him have been drinking the whole night it seemed like she was really out of it. Like she was just almost blacked out or passed out. And because him and Miss Yoon has been drinking with dinner, he thought that maybe she just got really drunk really fast. He claimed that he heard Miss Yoon say, yes, I'm okay, and he left her alone. I mean, again, this is a man who has to go up to Seoul. Like he has to go back to his wife's place where he has his own kid. You have this lady, your coworker is drunk at your bathroom. It's like, come on. Like I have to go soon, like it's getting pretty late. Then he claims that he came back a while later, I don't know exactly what time, but she wasn't coming out of the bathroom. So he went to check up on her again. And this time he claims that her clothes were off. Like just randomly, she took her clothes off and she was leaning against the wall as if she passed out. He claims that there was vomit all over her undergarments. So he decided to take them off and wash off her vomit off for her while she was passed out. Very odd. This is your coworker. She has vomit all over her body and you just decide to clean up for her like being the nice guy. We'll get to more details in a bit, but the prosecutor just decided to charge him with an interesting charge. I believe it was somewhere between negligence and murder. So they were trying to argue that he had the duty to save someone who was in danger, but he didn't. So they didn't actually find evidence that directly stated that Joe caused Yoon's death, meaning he hit her or did anything with her that led to her passing because again autopsy showed that this was a cerebral hemorrhage most likely due to her internal problems but that there was a chance that she could have survived if he got her medical attention but he didn't and that's what the prosecutors were trying to argue he could have helped her and missed the golden timing which had led to her death so technically negligence now it's hard to think why mr joe or anyone in that position if someone acted that way why you wouldn't have gotten help right Right? I mean, you left your coworker, your side lover, secret, whatever it might have been. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, this was someone that you knew that was in your house, in your presence. And you just like are holding her dead weight and just transferring her to her own back seat, not even in the passenger seat, like in the footrest area. There's actually CCTV footage at 10 p.m. I showed you guys of her going up to his house and she looks pretty fine. She doesn't look drunk. She's looking at her phone. Like she's not like trying to fall down or anything. It doesn't seem like she's that drunk at all. Now the trial was really interesting because Joe claimed some statements that nobody seems to believe. Now, of course, one of the biggest questions that the prosecutors and the judges had was why didn't you bring her to the hospital if she was that gone, that passed out? 
He said, I still didn't think to bring her to the hospital. He claims that he brought her out of the bathroom after washing her in the garments, and he went back to his bathroom to wash his own bathroom to clean up the vomits. He says that after cleaning his bathroom, he came out and heard her snore. So I thought she was sleeping, he said. Now, some of the experts did say that this does match with people who do go through brain hemorrhage. It indeed may make the victim or patient look like they're in a deep sleep, even making certain noises like light snoring. Throughout the trial, the prosecutors did argue that it seemed like both of them were in a sexual relationship or inappropriate relationship because they both were married and, you know, their wives and the husbands did not know. And there were apparently different incidents when Miss Yoon would come to Mr. Joe's house and that there were times that she actually used the stairs to go all the way up to the 19th floor and not the elevator so that she doesn't get caught. So it does seem like they did have an inappropriate relationship, although throughout the whole trial, Joe claimed that they were just friends. Now this could be various reasons. Obviously, if he was an actual lover or that they were cheating each other, even more lawsuits against each other's families because in South Korea, if you're married and your spouse cheats on you, you can actually sue the person that your spouse cheated with. And of course, admitting that you had some kind of inappropriate relationships, it could put more burden on him. Now there are obviously statements that doesn't make sense. Now remember, Joe claimed that he only opened the bathroom door about one inch. Police claim that if you only open about one inch, you can't even see the victim sitting on the toilet as he described. And here is an image of what his bathroom looked like. So they were claiming that he must have opened the door wider and actually saw what she was doing instead of one little inch. I mean, these are little details that the police will nitpick to see if you're telling the truth or not. When asked why he dragged Miss Yoon outside into her car, he claims that he thought it would be the best place for her to sleep outside of his place and get some fresh air so that she would sober up. Also, it's shady and doesn't make sense because if you wanted her to sober up and get some fresh air, why would you put her in a crammed car footrest? And one of the biggest influence of the outcome of the judgment was to determine if Miss Yoon was alive at this point or not. And if Joe knew if she was alive at that point or not. Experts could not 100% for sure say that she was alive and breathing at the point or passed away, but experts did say that most likely she could have been breathing at that point. And ultimately, if they did call for help at that moment at 2 a.m., she could have survived. But nobody can for sure 100% say that this could have been the case. But in the side, in my little personal opinion, I honestly think that Joe thought that she probably passed away. If you knew that she was alive and if you cared for her, you would at least make her be comfortable and have a chance of not suffocating to her death and dragging her like she was dead weight. Did he think that his wife was gonna come? to his apartment and check up on her, so he wanted to just get rid of her, or what? Now the biggest evidence was trying to figure out and go through Miss Yoon's phone records. Now in the CCTV at around 10 a.m., you can see her using her phone, and in the forensic records of her phone, it shows that she was active. She was texting her family, even talking to her daughter right before she went up to his house. And the records show that she actually stopped using her phone at around 10.28 p.m. Her daughter called her around 10.37 and 10.55, but she did not pick up. Around 10.57, her phone records show that she was using her phone again. And remember, Joe testified that around 11 p.m. was when he went to go check on her in the bathroom and she was vomiting and she was like almost passed out. But there were records that somebody was using her phone after 11 p.m. So it showed that somewhere between 11 to 11.27 p.m., somebody was using her phone and 11 and 27, she actually went into her search engine and was trying to search for something. Very interesting. They were trying to determine if this was her using her phone or not. Now the forensic records, they did show patterns of how she used her phone. So she would go to an app, go to her home screen, then go to another app. And that was just like her pattern of how she used her phone. In the records of somebody using her phone from 11 p.m. to 11.27, this was the same pattern that they saw. So they believe that most likely it was her still using her phone. Like I, I think everybody goes to their home screen and changes the app. So I don't know how reliable that can be, but it's also crazy because this part of the record shows
shows that somebody called her and she purposely did not pick up, but her phone was in her hand. Where somebody had her phone in her hand and she rather flipped the phone when somebody was calling. I believe Android that makes your phone automatically go into vibration mode or if you turn the volume down. So even all of that is recorded in your phone. So if Miss Yoon was knocked out around 11 p.m., that means somebody else was using her phone after that. Or could Joe's story be not true? That Yoon actually was not passed out, she was not in the bathroom vomiting, and she was just using her phone. But at 12 a.m., records show that Joe called his wife, who was in Seoul, saying that he most likely could not come home that day. Which means between the 30-minute window, something had to happen to Miss Yoon that made Mr. Joe say, hey, I can't come home, this is this might be an emergency. Something serious enough where he knew that he was not gonna go back home to his own wife. She also had a fitness app downloaded on her phone and this data showed any time your phone would move. The sensors indicated that the phone was also moving at 12.33 a.m. to 1.48 a.m. This should have been the time that she had passed out. So this is a mystery. Was it Miss Yoon that was holding a phone and just taking it around or was it somebody else touching her phone? If so, why? Why did somebody else have her phone? After he dropped her car off at the parking lot at sometime around 5 a.m., it is shown that he is walking around the area where the car was dropped off and he would take photos. Apparently, nobody knows what photos was taken because he deleted the photos, but the phone records show that he was using his camera app taking photos. And hours later, he does return home before he takes her to the ER. Interesting thing that the experts point out is that he had a black backpack with him. Now, in the first CCTV at around 2 a.m., the backpack was pretty full. Like, it is full to the brim like i don't nobody knows what was inside of his bag but in the morning when he came back home you could see that the backpack is a little bit deflated like he took out something till this day nobody knows what he took out what was inside of the bag and why he even took a bag with him when this was like an emergency situation and what would he need to discard maybe it was something that belonged to her the judges ultimately ruled that they did not find him guilty of murder or even negligence. They all did agree that what he did was really odd and not morally right what he did, but claims that no one knew for sure if she had passed away at the time from the elevator to the car. Because if she has been already passed away from the elevator to the car, it means that there's also no laws to say that you need to call help for someone who's already deceased and passed away. Also in Korea, it does state that you do have the duty to help, but you can't be punished for not helping someone who's in need of medical attention. People argue that if you are criminalized for not helping, it goes against free will. And to create wrongful suspects, again, putting the burden on somebody for not helping, or maybe a wrongful death by you accidentally causing someone's death. There was also just not enough information to say that Joe caused the actual death of Yoon. Again, autopsy ruled that most likely this was due to high blood pressure. Although again, the family say that they had no idea she had high blood pressure. And if it was a thing, it was undiagnosed. But it's like, how unlucky can you be? Like what are the odd chances that you randomly have this underlying whatever problem that you might be that was undiagnosed. You're at your coworker's apartment at night. I mean, maybe they were fooling around. A very, very, very strong activity, I mean that just caused her to, you know, pass away. But what are the chances of just being so unlucky in that moment? You know, like everything just falling into that place. In the CCTV, it also shows that Joe actually was the one who got her undergarments inside of the plastic bag and gave it to the ER. But at the end of the day, Yoon's husband also argues that even if they had an inappropriate relationship, what was going through Joe's mind to not call for help? At least could have done something about it. I mean, cheating on your husband or your wife is the second thing. Somebody's life is in danger. And even if they might have passed away, why would you dispose the body yourself for someone who didn't have criminal records in his background? So what happened? What is this theory? Number one theory could be that, I mean, maybe Joe did have something to do with Yoon's death. Maybe he did do something to her, but it was just not caught on the autopsy. So number two, it could be that, again, having an inappropriate relationship, he was just so scared at that moment that he might be caught cheating 
It might ruin his own family with his wife. He didn't want her to know. He probably just wanted to conceal her body and have somebody else find her. And I don't think he realized that what he did by not calling for help, not doing this and that, could have led him to even more trouble and more suspicions and more mystery. At the end of the day, Joe was found not guilty guilty and he is a free man. Now I believe before the court, he did try to end his own life and he even left a note, a goodbye letter to his family, to his coworkers saying that he felt burdened by what happened. Um, he fell down the five stories but did survive, just had some fractures. Now again, this case caused a big debate between should you be penalized, criminalized for not helping somebody who needed the medical attention. In my personal opinion, I think in extreme cases like this, I think he did deserve some kind of penalty or some kind of criminalization because this is a whole different case than just watching a bystander, a stranger. This person was inside of your house. You don't know if she's actually passed or not and you're dragging her body like that. That could have actually caused the death of her. So should you be penalized for your poor judgment? I say in extreme cases, yes. What do you guys think actually happened in this case? What are the laws in your country when it comes to Good Samaritan law? And do you think there's more to the story of what actually happened to Miss Yoon? We'll love to know your opinions in the comments down below. If you found this story to be interesting and something we need to learn, remember to share, hit the like button, which helps so much. And thank you so much to Harry's and see you on my next video.